This is Steven from Legit PC, and uh, today we're going to do a review of EVGA's Precision X. And this is a utility that you use to uh, control your NVIDIA graphics card, your NVIDIA GPU. And uh, it's a very, very great tool, and it also comes with something else called uh, the, um, the Rivetuner Statistics Server, which basically, uh, whenever you see any of my videos, you see that overlay that tells you how many frames per second, how much uh, memory you're using, um, GPU memory, uh, your fan speed, the percentage of usage of your GPU, that's the, that's what's going on up there. That's the software. And it comes with EVGA. When you install it, it comes with it. Of course, you could probably go into customs and tell them to not put that on there. Anyways, so EVGA has all different kinds of profiles to set up for your, uh, for your specific graphics card. It also has different... Um, different uh, looks or skins to go over it as well so uh, as well as controlling multiple graphics cards at one time um, whether you have SLI or in this case I have a, I have a uh, physics card right here my 460 and I have a 660 Ti as you can see I could uh, change them both um, separately and uh, they have different uh, setups here like for example this one the power targets locked right I can only do the GPU and memory clock offset. All right, so <clears throat> this isn't really a tutorial on how to use this software. This is just a review. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you kind of some of the things it's got. So number one, uh, the main thing that you'd probably use in here is probably the fan curve. So here, uh, we're you also could go here and go into the options. So here we have start with Windows, start minimize, uh, how often do you want it to check for updates. And here's my fan curve for this particular, uh, I think it has to go for both of them. Or maybe you could select them differently. I think it might be for, it's probably uh, separately. Anyways, so here's your fan curve and it's basically an X, Y coordinate and the first quadrant. Uh, so here you have your, your fan speed and here you have your temperature. So as the temperature goes up, where do you want your fan speed percentage will be? And it automatically knows where your, where your, uh, where your GPU is locked at as far as those yellow lines. So you know how, uh, how far it would go. So mine's locked at 80% and the lowest is 30%. So I could take my fan all the way up to 80%. Anyways, so you just click these guys. If you just click them, you could oh, hold up. There we go, got it. Okay, so you click them and drag them, or you could click in another one, right? It, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So you could just kind of, you know, make it to where it's, you know, stays, stays down, or what kind of slope you want it to do. And then you can see here, I kind of don't really want it to go over seventy. So I kind of pump the fan up, but I could let it go a little bit above that. So let's go ahead and make this guy something like that. And then that's kind of, so basically it'll just ramp up, you know, past 74. It'll just ramp up all the way to keep it from hitting 80, right? Which it never really does, so I'm not too worried about that. So that's a fan curve, and we'll go over some of the other options here. Uh, here's all the monitoring. So that's the on-screen display. OSD means that it is an on-screen display. So you just go in here and you click uh, Show on on-screen display, which is right here. And you also have some options for the Logitech keyboard, LCD display, and showing tray icon and stuff like that. Tray icons down there in the bottom right of uh, your Windows screen. And you have all different kinds of stuff that you can put in there. Of course, it knows that I have two GPUs in there, so it'll let me choose which ones I want to put in there. You know, you got power, how much power it's using, the clock, front side bus usage, bus usage, voltage, fan speed, fan tachometer, all that kind of good stuff. Right, so here I have memory usage, uh, GPU on usage, temperature, memory clock, and uh, frame time. Frame time is uh, milliseconds, how long it's on the screen. And uh, I don't have any, um, I don't have the tack on there anymore. But I could put that again. So here's a, you could toggle on screen display, show system time, things like that. You have some screen capture capabilities, right? Screenshot, thing like that. Uh, different kinds of profiles. 
And uh, you could also change the skins. So here I have all different kinds of skins. There's my 660 Ti skin, which I don't like too much. Here's some of the previous skins that you've seen. But default is this one. I like this one, so that's what we're going to go with. All right, so uh, it's got all different kinds of stuff. Um, you could do, you know, your voltage. You could uh, uh, up the voltage to your card in order to make it more stable type thing. Over voltage, you know, boost, stuff like that. And, uh, of course, these sliders here, you basically could change it to where, like, I want to set... So so when you go into a GPU-intensive uh, game, it will upclock 35 mega megahertz more than what your standard clock is. Same thing with memory clock. It'll, it'll boost that up from from your memory clock from your standard standard non boost memory clock it'll boost it up that much more sorry it'll boost that up past what your boost clock is right so if your boost clock is uh, 100 uh, 100 extra megahertz on each one and you boost it 30 it'll go 130 on both and you can set those two separately also on other cards you have you know different power targets to uh to choose you know what what exactly you want to do and basically, what you have to do is you have to, uh, you know, mess around with these in order to get it to where you want it to be, and keep it from crashing, keep it nice and stable, and keep it from overheating type stuff. All right. So, and then also, you, of course, you could do the same thing here, except for in this in in this setting, you basically pick what you want your boost clock to be, right? Not like the other one. The other one's uh, how much more do you want to give it. This one is how much do you want to give it in general. So you can see that each card is controlled differently. You know, these are this is a 400 series. This is a 600 series controlled completely differently. But you could also have them linked to each other in SLI mode, so that uh, if uh, you want to um, make them all the same and do all your overclocking here, then you could do that through just one. And also, just in case you don't know, this right here is showing uh, what your clock is here. And uh, this one here is, I think, the performance that it's at. So right now it's at standard. It's just idling. So later on, it'll pump up, right? And you can see here the arrows of where they're going to be during that boost. And that gives you a good idea, right? All right, so... It also has this other option that I don't use too much where you could basically enable a frame rate target and set the max FPS that you want in this in this particular program will cycle your uh, your settings to keep you at that frames per second to make sure you know you're not overusing your card for something that you don't want um, things like that you know so, so that if you it's just sort of like a v-sync except for It'll downcycle your card. For example, it'll work for any game. So, like, if you go into a game and um, it's like an old, three or four years old game, you know, like World at War, or Call of Duty World at War, or something, it'll downcycle your your uh, your uh, GPU because it's it's not as as difficult on that card as other games. So it will save you uh, save your card that uh, overclock and bringing up the temperature speed and things like that. And uh, yeah, so that's basically, uh, you know, and, and here's a performance log. So it'll show you all of the, where you're at right now, which you will also see on your on-screen display. Or you could, you know, have another screen that you're not playing your game on and have this on there and, you know, save a log on, uh, you know, save a benchmark, benchmark log. Anyways, so uh, now we're going to move on to uh, River Tuner. So I'm pretty sure I went over everything. I mean, it's not too in-depth, but it's definitely the best free software to control your NVIDIA card, and it works. It doesn't have to be just for EVGA. It works for basically all cards. So I would highly suggest uh, you check it out and uh, get it. And uh, it also comes with this other one that basically brings it full circle, which I'll show you right now. I'll bring it in the screen. So here we have uh, the Rivetuna um, uh, statistics server, which basically is really, really nice. So here you see that you could select it in different places, move it around. Um, and then basically it's going to show what you selected in the, in the other one on the, on the on-screen display. It'll show that right here. It's just, you know, uh, just putting it there. And then you have all different kinds of ways that you want to render it on-screen. 
See like uh, raster 3D, vector, things like that. And here you could actually pick the font. That's kind of cool. Anyways, uh, and then here um, the on display uh, screen coordinates. Sometimes some games like you can switch this back and forth. Some games if it doesn't work, you could just switch this and it'll actually work. It's pretty cool. And then it has a stealth mode, which basically tries to disguise it so games don't know it's a hook. Because I actually had problems with Battlefield, uh, not Battlefield, um, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, where the game would actually crash because it was thinking that it was some sort of um, some sort of uh, hack, right? Because it was a hook. So even stealth mode couldn't save it from that, but sa stealth mode usually saves it from that, from keeping your programs from crashing. So also, if that's also another uh, kind of way to say it is that um, if you do have that problem uh, I would suggest uh, try turning this off and seeing if your game would run after that it's a good place to start alright so and here's an on off mode here um, frame rate limit zero is infinite custom uh, direct 3d all different kinds of stuff and this is like shadows for drop shadows yeah so I don't want that here's on this is where you could pick the colors that you want it and here you could pick the size, right? I had it that size. And I don't particularly know what this one does. I haven't used that one before. And here's some of your, uh, I think it's just basically all of them that, that are supported. I don't know if it's ones that are directly on my computer. But uh, anyways, you could select different profiles right here. Or you could just be in the global and set your global... Uh, for, for all your programs uh, just set it there and uh, that way you could have it uh, work for everything so yeah so just uh, mess with these settings and get it to where you want it and here you can move it over you know put it in a custom place on your screen like you can put it down here if you wanted to put it up over here if you wanted to as you see here you know you just move it over right very cool stuff very customizable. It's probably it's probably the best thing you'll find out there. It's probably the best on-screen display you'll find out there. It, it, it can put down a lot more information than Fraps. Uh, Fraps will only show you, you know, um, the just the frames per second on the top left, and that's it. It'll look exactly like this. But uh, if you look at any of my videos, that you'll see the white and black, white with black outline uh, stats up the top left, and uh, that's basically, you know. That that's that's what you're seeing is is this program here. So uh, that's basically it. Um, that's my review of uh, Precision EVGA Precision uh, Precision X and a very nice program. They do release uh, quite a bit of updates. This might not even be the current version. I'm not completely sure, but probably very little change. Probably just be some you know compatibility updates and things like that. You could set your own fan curves. Uh, you could change. You could change uh, the voltage and do other monitoring stuff. Has its own on-screen display and it's completely free. All you have to do is sign up on the EVGA.com website and then go and find it and download it and then you're ready to go. Install on your computer and uh, control your NVIDIA card. Um, with it doesn't have to be EVGA. I think it could be from any maker. Uh, I, I have a lot of EVGA cards, but I know of other cards that are not that you can control the same thing. So definitely something to get. This is probably the number one monitoring service and overclocking uh, program out there. And, uh, you know, it's similar to MSI Afterburner, but this one is definitely for sure the best. And it's also updated a lot, and it always has stayed current. EVGA likes to keep it good for their cards. So definitely go and, and sign up on their site, get it, tinker around with it, set change your fan curves and things like that. And it's pretty simple, of course. You see that you don't have to be, you know, a super geek in order to just set your fan curve so you can get, uh, you know, that your sound down from your fan. It's very, very user-friendly. You don't have to be, you know, super, super geeky to figure it out. So that's why I like it a lot. Um, I, I, I already know most of the stuff, so I could easily go in here and overclock, which I don't do too often. But, uh, yeah, it's that perfect tool for that. So go out, go get it. Um, look up some tutorials on how to overclock and uh, get the best out of your card for, for what you want to get out of it. So this has been Steven from Legit PC, and this is my review of the EVGA Precision X um, overclocking tool 
and uh, standard GPU maintenance tool. And if you like my videos, please subscribe for other videos like it. And I'd like to thank you for watching. See you in the next video.